Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. We're going to do some fun paintings. Now, this time of year, it's heading into, it's almost October. Uh, what we do in our gallery is twice a year we have a big gallery sale that funds the Jansen Art Foundation. We have a foundation that does charity work and uh, provides a lot of scholarships and stuff like that to uh, those people that are studying art. And uh, so, Twice a year, my wife and I donate quite a, quite a large collection of our paintings that I've done throughout the year into the big gallery sale. So, And I'm going to be painting for it for the next couple of uh, weeks here to help fund this channel. And the Jansen Art Studio also funds our YouTube channel here. So uh, you'll be seeing some links coming up at the end of this video and uh, throughout the next couple of weeks of videos that we put up for some of the paintings. And uh, hopefully you can go over there and visit the, the gallery, the online gallery and maybe you want to collect one of the paintings. But for that, what I'm going to do is paint, do a couple of the rose paintings. We're going to do a couple of landscapes, a couple of birds and wildlife paintings that will go into the sale. And today, uh, what I'm going to do is, this is an 11, so it's 11 inches this way, 14 inches this way. This is a board. This is a, a, a Super MDF board. Uh, it's very, very nice. I gave it one light coat of uh, the uh, uh, canvas prep medium, sanded it with 180 grit sandpaper, and it's all ready to go. It's one of my favorites to, uh, you know, paint florals on. And so uh, let's have some fun. My palette, this is the same palette that I use on quite a few things. All these colors are listed in the video description down below. This is all right here. This is the Derivan Open Medium. You see me use this several times. I have a little cap of the uh, Jansen Art Extender out here that slows it down. This thins it out. This does not. So, you know, I use it with uh, consistencies. And to the normal palette, I'm also adding the medium white here this time. This is a medium white color. I love it when I do backgrounds with it, and it's very, very popular, and a lot of people love those colors when we go to sell them in the gallery. So I'm going to take a little bit of extender and my 2-inch wide. This is a, a Fusion 2-inch wide brush. And I'm going to take some of my medium white out here. Just mix it in here just a bit. I don't, I, I like, and it's surprising, but I like areas that dry a little faster and areas that dry a little slower. So I get variation in the technique. And so I add, you know, I don't mix it up real, real well. So I get some inconsistencies. And then I like to gray this down a bit. And again, I don't like to mix it up real well so that when I come over here to my board, I will get some variation into the color, see? And I like that going down here. I like, you know, when you're painting contemporary and I do a lot of contemporary looks, I like these kinds of variations. Now, I, you know, one thing that's very popular is if I have a little bit more blue up at the top of the painting, people like that, almost like it's a look of the sky. So. I'll add some of that right up here to the top. Maybe a bit of extender in here. This just helps it slide a little easier here. And so I'm not using the extender for anything, other, you know, to keep it super wet, but because uh, I do like it to dry at different, uh, you know, different amounts. But uh, uh, I, I like it because it causes, you know, if you don't have it mixed up real well, it causes skipping into the painting. See all this right here? That's where the paint was just a little bit drier. And then you got this smoothness that comes through here, and that's where the paint was a little bit wetter. And so that gives you just a... A wonderful variation of dry and not dry when you're putting on backgrounds. You'll see some artists, you know, I used to, and I've done it several times, I put on just a drip of water and run that through, and I like that. Let's uh, come right into the center here. We'll take some of our pine green, some of our burnt sienna here, and let's just add some of that right into the, the center mass here that, you know, where I like to do the, you know, this... Uh, leaves and they'll be suggestive of leaves and background stuff stuff going on here and sometimes I'll take this out like it's kind of growing out little marks and stuff like that and uh, so it takes the composition out I'm just going to wipe my brush here just a second and pull some of that through and you can see I can soften off or what I call blur blur off some of those colors and movements here. I want it a little bit sharper, more movement here into the center. So I might add another bit of the movement. And sometimes I really like, I get the, I really like the movement that I get. And then I cover it up with flowers. But uh, so I kind of like that right there. Maybe a, 
a little bit darker some contrast you know when I paint for a, a gallery sale I like to vary the contrast so here to darken that green down a bit more I'm going to put a touch of violet in it and see that just gives me a real deep little dark area right in there that I like and I can visualize the stem you see me paint this kinds of compositions you know hundreds of times I love these types of compositions they're fun to do try different colors color marks and stuff and uh, you know use some different size brushes here too as you work out some of these colors and see I just love that that movement of that color down through there it's very much um you know I promise you we're going to study and we're still we're still going to do that I got so many things that we want to do um the the grand manor style of Richard Smith which I really really love but some of these tones and color movements and stuff you know he's he's known for and just moving those colors you know through it's just he's su such a remarkable he was such a remarkable artist and stuff and so it's kind of fun to do that now I'm going to uh take off just a bit. I'm going to leave some of this. I'm going to do a backwards turned rose, maybe a couple of blossoms and a small and a and a rose right up in here. Maybe we'll point it out this direction out here. So a rose right in there and maybe a couple of blossoms. So back turned one and, and one right down in there. And uh, with these colors, I think, uh, and you see how this is, I just love this, see? And you'll get areas of drying and not drying. If yours is really, really dry, you can take just a tiny bit of water, you know, on, on your paper towels. Like if I dip right here, I have a little container of water. And I put just a little bit of water on that. You can cut right through and really bring out a, a highlight or something like that, which I don't want to do too much onto that one. But you can, you know, you can come back in and you'll see me do this quite a bit on some of my paintings where I want to say okay where's my going to be my highlight and stuff you know onto a rose I can start to visualize a casual you know rose up in there so that that works and you'll see me on several of the videos do stuff like that now that also works if you're painting landscape these techniques work on everything guys and this is why you should paint them you like on landscapes you can pull back you can pull back the look of snow on some of a, a distant mountain without having to go in there and and positively paint it you do what we call negatively paint it and it works really really well all right so i'm going to turn this rose to the back back here so one of the things i'm going to start out with is some dark so i'm going to take some dark green a little bit of violet so i have a nice core dark and i'm actually going to make this a little bit different than what i started there to show you guys so this will be where the calyx is going to come right into that rose there and what i and my goal here is to i'll use a little extender i use extender when i want the colors to be a little thinner and that's usually in towards the back of the painting I want to make these kind of a, um, a peach color and a beautiful peach color you've seen me paint before comes from yellow oxide and quinacridone violet and it just makes beautiful peach colors here and I want this a little bit lighter a little bit warmer here so a little bit lighter and we'll come back here and we're gonna just put on the idea of some back petals because this rose is going to be turned and so see I, I model this on my brush I don't mix it up real well and I like to uh, use the brush so that I get some variations here into the this is you know going to be a, a petals turning kind of sideways here maybe have a petal here flipping down let's get a little more peach into that a little more light maybe a petal here now see I'm starting with a back one you don't normally see me do this but uh, you, you know a lot of times with those of you that are beginners I always say start with your your primary rose which is going to be this one right in here but <clears throat> I kind of see where I'm going with this so I just gonna go ahead and go for it I'm gonna start some of this back one here so I'll go a little bit darker peach here and let's come up in here up into the front and these will be the petals that are reaching down into the calyx as we go around towards that calyx let's get this just a little bit darker peach a little green a little burnt sienna some of the yellows a little bit darker peach colors right down here peaches oranges kind of colors 
and we'll put some of that in. Maybe some touches of this nice quinacridone and stuff. See, that's just real pretty colors. And so we'll just put some color marks there inside that area there. Keep it light and casual, airy. Let's gray a bit here. This will help pop off the edge of this petal. So this is like the petals coming back down towards the calyx here. So you're looking at the back side of the rose. It'll come clear here in just a minute. Maybe a little bit of the, the greens pulling out here. That'll be fine. A little bit more of my light, maybe peach colors here. I have to keep in, in mind here also the, uh, the direction here of the uh, um, you know the light and I really want it to come in this way so I got to put a little bit more light maybe a warmer little when you're thinking light I always like to think a little more yellow a little warmer light something right up in here pulling down and vary those edges of those petals so they're not completely perfect we're gonna paint more of a raggedy rose, you know, almost a peony kind of look to it. And you could turn these into peonies really, really easy here. And so what we'll have, we'll come in here with some green and a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white, a nice lighter yellow green. What we're going to have is this stem coming back down in here like this. And it's going to hit right there into the calyx. So it's a little different, a little different look for us here. Painting the back side here of a, of a, a rose. You can put septals on there if you want. Uh, you know, the small little leaves that are going to go around. You know, here, a few of those out. Just ideas of them. Put some of those greens out. Just little marks and stuff of them there and uh, let's take that green and some of this model up some of this other color here and just finish off some of that rose there maybe a little more peach color right up in here pushing that that petal up so we get a, a, a good sense of the petals here pulling back into the calyx and that's what happens here on this side of the rose. So, and we'll get that nice, bright warmth, a nice little splash of that right out here, hitting the top of that rose right there. And right out there, that's pretty good. And build it. So you can see how many times, really, I go through something like this several times, building the, the shapes of them and, uh, We'll push in and out a bit. This has to. This this uh, can be very very soft. It does not have to uh, be uh, um, very defined because this is just going to set back here and we'll just. I mean, because it's not the main interest of the flower here. Okay, let's just put in a touch more of the maybe an idea of the light of this petal coming back in right in and I'll reset that septals there those I mean the calyx of it just a bit so we have some of those feelings there and I just love to just tap in a little bit of mottled which means not real mixed yellow burnt sienna so I get these variations of these tones right in there I love that a little dark red violet and that green has a nice deep shadow right in there here a little bit of that shadow so it gets kind of a you know a pretty little look to it there and we we'll, we'll, we'll might come in there and, and change it a little bit more but you can let's just put in a real soft kind of peach darker kind of petals right out here maybe the the viewer starts to see a bit more of those. See, it's it's colors, color marks, nice tonal color marks. That's what's going to give the the prettiness, little touches of it, the prettiness to the to the flower, the interest. These little strikes, these little marks of color. See, every time I touch that little mark of color, let's even put a little darulite in there. 
Okay, there's a little bit of that warmth yellow right in there. So you get that nice little dark, I mean that nice color mark there. And uh, maybe we'll put an edge of a petal coming right in there like that in towards, towards that septal. So you can get the feeling of that just turning to its side. Let's put a tiny bit of warmer yellow green here. Right up in through here, let's get a touch more yellow green. Model that all together. See, I don't paint with a perfectly mixed brush. See that little bit of yellow comes off there? That little yellow mark, isn't that kind of pretty? You get that little yellow. That's what I look for. So it's not all perfect. You know, you get some of these other, and I look for those little colors. That's a little too light, so I just tap a little green and stuff and go right through that there. Just create that, that uh, mark, and I want to have a touch darker right up around that area too. That helps that just uh, that stay right there in that child. That's a pretty good start. We might come back and revisit that again. So let's go back up over here. We're going to have kind of a peach rose, so which is our yellow and a little bit of our quinacridone. Slightly different here. Let's just push some of that color onto this rose and then touch it in a few other areas right out here as well because they are, so it does harmonize those two roses together. So we'll do that here. There we go. Push that around just so you get that. So you see, you see that color travel. The center of this rose, I'm going to keep more quinacridone, maybe a little bit of red into it. And so we're going to push this center right up here like this here. And then the bottom bowl the shadow side of the bottom bowl and let those marks, just let your brush kind of dance around there. Make sure you take a mark or two of that color right out onto this one too, if they're the same variety of roses, so that you keep that consistent mark of color going in there. Okay, let's uh, lighten up maybe a, a little more uh, Darulite yellow. Darulite yellow in the peach is really pretty too. It makes kind of a orangier one, just a little bit orangey. So that's really a, a pretty color as well. And uh, let's come in and just touch this in. That's kind of a pretty color. I like that. And so, and, and I'm a big advocate, if you know, if you like that, just touch it into some of these others here as well so that you're pulling that color in, so that you're harmonizing those colors. And it, it doesn't take very much. See, just a little bit of that color to keep that uh, going there. So that's really pretty there. So let's uh, drop this in a bit more. And I want to round it up. So my bowl comes right down in here. Here's going to be the center. I've got to build that up a bit more. But I want to uh, round my rose up here a bit more. So I just, this kind of, and see I do quick little marks. I don't do it too many times. All that will blend and you'll lose all that color. That's the hardest part, I think, is don't do it too many times. Let's get back to that wonderful earlier peach of the yellow oxide and quinacridone. Slightly different. Push some of that right down there. Nice, beautiful tone. Let's grab some of that, maybe just a touch lighter. See, I don't mix it up too much. Let some of this sit unrefined in your brush. And let's just put on the other bit here. And we'll set this one in, maybe a petal this way. So if my calyx is going to come in right in here like that, I angle my brush so it's I'm visualizing where my calyx is. So I'm always visualizing where the bowl and the calyx is. So some of you that are, you know, struggling with roses, and I know that struggle, guys. I know that struggle. Um, that when you're struggling, trying to see the roses and do the things. Um, you know, you, you always imagine, always, always keep in mind where that calyx is, where that bowl of that rose is, because that's where the prettiness of that rose comes in. See, so I just drug my finger like that, and I give the impression that there's that calyx right down there. And uh, let's just put in a softer little bit of the light color right out here, like side petals 
turning down here a bit here around let's warm and lighten up just a bit here and we'll bring these in a little bit more towards that little more light and see I love that where I'm push I push my brush down and dig into the paint a little bit and see what that does is it picks up a bit of that shadow giving a little bit of a difference now I'm going to start adding a little open medium here not to really keep it wet but to almost transparent it up a little bit as you start to add a lot of white this is the one thing I've known for a long time adding a lot of white will make it go very opaque adding some open medium here is going to, to reduce its power of the white because it's going to make it just a touch more transparent and that's what I'm looking for see I can push that around and get that little bit of transparency in there too while also developing that light that back light tone that I want to have back there and we'll ruffle up these back edges a bit here so those two roses kind of come together so I just push so my brush you know for a lot of years I was a decorative painter and we did everything in strokes comma strokes s strokes different kinds of marks now my brush I look at my brush as a tool for just applying the paint and I can push it I can pull it I can slide it sideways and that's what I look at when I'm doing this let's build this pedal out a bit there like that that's pretty neat um, you know sometimes we'll we'll put those right into like a little point here coming in like that so that pedal looks a little different shape let's get more white I'm gonna add a bit of the open medium here to this and that's gonna be a touch light so I'm just gonna add a, a bit of the other peach color here and start to take this size down just a bit there and maybe even soften that edge blur that edge off just a bit here we can have a touch of the lighter edge right in here so that petal stands up here like that let's uh, go even lighter yet this time I'm going to be drawing more power to it so I'm going to wipe some of the excess off my brush I'm going to lighten up my my color and I'm really going to put it mostly on the side here you can see a lot of texture on the side I call this the drawing side of the of the uh, of the the brush and I'm going to roll down and draw this petal right in there maybe even lighten that up a bit more and hit this edge right here touch more there and just I want to leave that bowl kind of that bowl in there but you can give you can give the impression of some more petals right out here without being perfect with those petals now see I pull out and that gives me a lost edge but I can pull in like this and make more of a defined edge so it all depends on what I want to do with the petal now what I want to do definitely is I'm going to pinch wipe my brush that takes off the excess paint put a little bit of that bowl shadow into it and pull out from where that bowl is right out and just see I pick up white right there do you see that and the tip of my brush so I got to get rid of that otherwise you drag white in here and you destroy your bowl so I picked it up again so I just pinched some of that off and just pull back and that keeps me my nice soft now I want a little darker so let's just put a quinacridone and a little bit of the green the green will tone it this burnt sienna will do it as well I want a little more darker shadow right down in here which it, it's you know because my rose is so light if I put some more shadow in here that's going to increase the contrast right up here and increase the the visual depth of the rose do you see that and uh, maybe even a little red violet in with this as we come right in here and we'll open up this small little marks just turn your brush just tap it around little opens here little openings here open up that rose just a bit there okay and uh, then we'll come back some yellow some of that color a little softer a little bit of white and we can use that to kind of close up some marks in here small little marks little taps little movements into the center of that rose there and uh, 
We'll pick up a little more yellow, a little more light. As I go light to the front here, I'm going to take some of the excess off my brush. As I go more light up into the front here, let's just, just add a petal or two, more shape. That's up to you. You know, do you want to leave it real fluffy looking or do you want to add that little bit of shape, which really that little edge right there brings it way in front of this one, which gives me more room if I want to come back here and add a little bit of light and dark shape onto that one as well. You know, there's just a lot of ways that you can do that. I could increase the the light back back through here and uh, push that a little softer and then increase the shadow. Let's go a little bit of green and that's a little bit grayer. Increase the mark of the shadow here of this piece because this petal is sitting up in shadow so we'll soften that out and so we get a, a feeling of you know, more of it that these petals are in shadow here. And we can break up some of that just a bit. I don't like this big whoopee petal right here yet. So I got to break up that line. And all I'm interested in is, I, I did like it originally, but now it's distracting just a bit. So I'll just take some of the soft color here, nice grade soft color, and just push that around. And you'll see it'll softly push some edges of those that rose back because it doesn't need all that you you'll get the visual that this is the back turned edge of a, you know a rose that's turned back here let's put a little more touch of greens out here out like that so we get some of that <clears throat> some of that look maybe a bit of that darker red violet again that i liked those little marks little hits and marks those always just add so much to the to the rose itself now how much do we want to i'm going to add a little open medium let's go back to our peach color here a little more yellow and we'll decide how much maybe a little bit of the violet and green here we'll decide just how much we want to add definition wise out on this side of the rose let that just kind of blur out i love the i love the blurring of the roses here let's put a bit of that right down in here so i soften that bowl gives me a great place to put in a real light stroke of some of the of maybe a light petal of the rose right up here here around just kind of maybe round that back a bit round it into the bowl see how I'm moving everything so as I come down in here my finger everything I do is down into the bowl and so I like to do that and those of you that have listened to me before you'll see that I use my left hand a lot to do a lot of softening in my right hand to do a lot of the painting and because they they manipulate the colors differently and that's what gives me more uh that's what gives me more uh, interest into the painting my two hands paint differently and i know that sounds crazy but it it works i started doing that and painting with both hands and they give a different look and i like that because sometimes i you know i came from so many years of stroke painting and everything was always a stain and i used my right hand and then as i became more of a casual artist I started to use both my hands a little differently because I had so many habits of painting them absolutely perfect. And so I started using both hands. I know it sounds crazy, but it works. It works for me. Maybe it'll work for some of you guys. Give it a try. You know, if you find your painting is always a little stiff, try painting with your other hand as well. We'll add just a few little marks in there. Push that around just a bit. We want just a few marks in there to help see that. And let's put a little more of the warmer color with it right on over here. And, um, but a little darker. It's warmer, but it's a little darker. Close off that edge just a touch. 
maybe round this down in here just a bit here now and and if you closed off some of that contrast like I just did just put a little bit of that like quinacridone right in there and just do half circles kind of to open that right back up right in there like that just open that back up and push that in there there you go and that will loosen up the rose a little bit. Maybe a bit of that quinacridone and some of that yellow. Let's get that some of that right back in here and push that right up into those colors. See, I love that traveling up and out in that. And I love that bit of that Darulite too. Darulite is such a beautiful glowy color down into a rose. See that glow that it gets down in there? And the... the Darulite going into a little bit of the quinacridone is just so pretty as far as just touches of it down in there. Do you see that? And uh, so it gets uh, some of that beautiful glow color interest right there. It's a beautiful look. Now we'll put a touch more light right in there. Bring some of those marks, just the suggestions of some of those petals. This is where like... In, in some of the roses and stuff, I would build a little more texture up into them. I like to do that. Maybe uh, I have a nice edge there, so maybe I'll pull some of this out and push that in and out there. Sometimes if I feel that uh, the petal is reaching or working too hard, that's when I'll hit just a smaller little mark of one right in there. And, you know, like I had here a minute ago and took out. I'll push that back in and just create that movement back in there because that just helps it. Sometimes just like a, a little touch of light texture will make it look like it's leaning over or doing something different there. And that works as well. Maybe a bit of dark to reinforce that shadow. So you can just touch it in there, little marks. And, you know, with that, with a lot of that, if you're painting a Grand Manor style, something like that, you would want to have just little touches little touches. Let's put a little green with some of this and just do a few little touches here right out like that. So maybe a few little marks, little touches right out here. Softer ideas, just movement. I paint for movement more than anything else. Petals moving back into the rows in a real soft presentation there. That's what I like. Let's go just a touch lighter right out here. Just a bit of the light there. That'll, and what I'm determining is just how much of this rose I want to round up there. See? So that's what I'm looking at. Maybe uh, build a bit more light right out here. That's up to... This is my choice now, how much I want to uh, build. I do like to push and drag back and forth some of that green into the petal here like this and you've seen me do that before and that gives the maybe little light touches to the edge that gives the feeling of a transparent petal translucent petal that's how I like to do it drag some of that background right in there gives a different feel to it let's um, pull though some of this out so I don't get this feeling that the rose is completely going up some of it has to pull out here and see by pulling out by pulling out i'm changing the direction your eye goes up this way but the pulling out your eye starts coming this way and if i pull a light little one right here down like this i start to round your eye back down around the rose see just a bit so yeah it all works now let's come back in here with some peach color some nice peach color and let's just work one or two other, like a little rosebud or something down here. Maybe one coming down this way. Okay. And uh, so we'll take some of that, a little bit of that light here. An idea of maybe this is a bud that's just going to open, that's just beginning to open up. So we'll pull some of this right down in here, keeping, uh, you know, a little bit more of an oval shape to it. We can have a petal or so coming out here, but, uh, you know, so it, like it's just beginning to open up. That's working a little hard. 
keep them in close, not too far down. And you could close it up with some uh, calyx and some, some septals and stuff. Let's put um, a bit more of that quinacridone, maybe a bit of that red violet in there. And let's just work that around like a little bud here. We'll close it up in just a minute. Let's just, I love that red violet and then come right by that red violet with a little bit of the yellow and, and quinacridone, some darulite, nice little burst of that in there. She just puts that, that color in there, which I like. And uh, let's close this up for a bud here. Close that up a bit more. And a uh, little bit more light right out here. That'll make a pretty, just kind of imagine a petal there. And then you can see kind of the petal and the bottom part of the bowl here. That will just kind of push this color in and around a bit. And... Imagine, and see, I like to move that around. That's some of that green comes in there. That's just nice. It just kind of sets that. Let's take a bit of our red violet and reemphasize that center red violet and quinacridone here. Just kind of draw that around. Let's get a little bit more. Got a little stingy on the paint there. I always tell my students it's easier to paint when you use paint. So don't be stingy here with your paint. Use paint. Get it in there. There we go. That's pretty good. Maybe a bit of that green and stuff. That's starting to dry up there. So You can always reconstitute it with a touch of water. You put a touch of water in there and see how it reconstitutes up. So if I like that color, I can go back and use that color there move that around a bit I like this and see this gives me some movement and some color modeling and stuff like that and then I can come in there with like a real pretty like yellow green in or something like that and put in like a um, you know the uh, edge of the of, uh, leaf or something I'm going to put in restate that calyx right there that's pretty good. And uh, maybe a nice yellow green here. Edge of a, like a leaf or something coming out there. That'll work like that. And uh, I love these greens and, and especially down into buds and stuff. You can put some of those greens and stuff down into those into those colors, you know, catch that green into the roses and stuff. They, it works so very well. So let's just put a bit of that in there. There we go. And just let what happens happen here. Stroke some of that. Let's just move some of that out. So nice little bud here. And uh, there we go. Just movement. Just movement here into that. Kind of pretty there. I'm going to come back and reshape or just, I want to put a lighter little mark back out here still because this is the light hit of this rose back here. And it's dropping back behind these other petals here. So I want that light to hit right up there. Maybe a touch more yellow into it. Right up there. There we go. That nice light. Let's put a bit of that light right out here. Maybe a bit of that right in here. There. Maybe a bit more of that light right up into the front right up here. Nice heavy paint, nice heavy texture of that light coming right in here. There we go. 
almost makes that look like two little petals there. So I'm building it. See how it's building and building. Let's get a little light yellow, green. We'll push this right up here as a lighter petal, or excuse me, a leaf coming in there. Maybe a bit more yellow, brighter yellow. Little Hansa will make it even brighter yellow green. Get a nice little contrast right in there. Imagine that leaf right there. You can put a light side, dark side of it or something, you know, that just always works so nice here. Let's get some darker though, some burnt sienna, some green. Love these colors. Sometimes that green with a little bit of the red violet that darkens it just a touch more. And you can use this back here for some shapes of some of the back leaves. And this is where I, I should have a touch more green. And I like them a bit transparent. So I'm going to add some extender, which will help thin out my colors. And that gives me a, a chance. You know, one of the things I like to do, you've seen me do this so many times, is I'll shape the leaf like this. Like there's a couple of leaves maybe right here and right here. Little ovals, right? And then I let it sit for a second. Then I take my finger and I run over it to destroy the edge of it. So it becomes more impressionistic like that and if I want that to pop off some more I can take some green and some red violet which is one of your dark colors here and do a little negative painting around that rose just add a shadow you can add a little bit of a vein line but sometimes when I go that dark I'll use a vein line with a light color but I like to take like colors like this and come in here down towards the bottom of the painting and do some negative painting shaping of the rose if i if i feel the rose is a little bit wild or something down here then i'll use a color like this this dark and we call this negative painting to come out and pop off the edge of the rose a bit so you see that edge of that rose and that works really really nice and so that's the green and the red violet just a nice deep dark color and I can use that. Sometimes I'll just go more green, maybe green and a little yellow and some of that modeled in here to give the feeling of leaves and stuff in here as well. Here. And build it. I build and build and build. Maybe a bit of the color coming out here. There like that. So you get the feel of that rose but it's very soft out there. We can use some of that yellow green and green right out here as well. Breaking that up, maybe some of this darker, more transparent here, a little bit of, a little bit of extender into it. Out here, just start to, uh, the ideas, maybe a idea of some calyx or, or, or I mean a stem and some marks or something. Sometimes I'll take this just real transparent, maybe a little yellow in this too. So slightly different color, but very transparent here. And I'll pull this line down to increase that vertical look of the, of the composition. So see, I could use my background here to increase the vertical look here of this of this composition of it pulling through like that. Let's take some of that green, red, violet. Maybe a touch of that blue just got into my brush as well. And put in some dark color notes, just little marks, darker notes of color here, which increases the contrast, which increases the, the, uh, the pow of the floral right in through there. See, this darker cool playing up against that warmer peach that's right there. A little bit of that blue in there. Nice dark note. Some of that right out in here. Just pull some of that out. That's just good color pulling out. Now, see, I could take, if I wanted the lift part of that, then I would say a little yellow green maybe a touch of white, nice little warm yellow green. And let's add another leaf or two right there, right out this front, out this side. 
and it sits right right there against that uh let's even pop a little brighter yellow maybe just do this side which is the light side of the leaf right there that works there so yeah maybe uh a little bit different green right down over here. And we'll just give the idea of a leaf there. Maybe a little more yellow green. Some of that coming down here. Little touches, a little more green, maybe burnt sienna. So see, I the one thing that I found over the years is change your greens. Change your greens. And then you change your greens <laughs> you want to change them so many times because that's where the interest is going to come from you you can plant all these beautiful florals and then destroy your composition by doing all the same color leaves so you don't want to do that and take some of that off here change some of those change some of those colors <clears throat> change some of that let's get that burnt sienna and green this real pretty. Let's just pull some of that up. There we go. Just work that through there like that. That's kind of pretty. Let's put a little bit more of a soft peach kind of color down here. We were going to start something down here and we can just maybe a bit of a just an idea here. Doesn't have to be anything down there. Just the idea here of something. You know, you don't need to have, you can just put on like a little oval and stuff and give the impression of a bud or more rounded for a, a little bit more mature rose. You don't need a lot here, especially coming down here on this bottom side. You don't need a lot going on down there to su suggest a rose. I want everybody viewing to be up here, <clears throat> excuse me, up into that center part right up there. Let's get um, just a bit more green and toned color right in here onto the back side of this one. It's a little too cool from where I'm sitting here. So we'll push a bit more of that right back in here like that to turn get this nice turned edge here here maybe a little bit of a mark back here I just want to give the idea that this is turning to the back and so I really start to you know after you get all this stuff in then you can put in just a a few little marks to really sit, set the shapes of some of these petals but in so a lot of times and I tell you guys this all the time and this is very important I paint for the movement see the movement of the the petal in and out I paint the movement of the petal first and then I'll, I'll work on the other parts but the movement here so let's push in and out just a bit of that color just in and out a bit here here we go. This turning backwards. And I want to have um, a little bit better look to that turning in and out there. Right back here. A little bit more of a edge right there. Right up into that calyx. A bit more of that edge of that petal turning back there. And that's better. Let's... Uh, Get this. There we go. There we go. That's a better, better folding in of some of those petals there, and uh, these pulling back up into there helps you look helps helps it look like that turned edge back up there. That's pretty good. Yeah. Like I did like that bit of brighter yellow right there by the edge of that where the calyx went in there, so that's pretty. Keep that in there. 
Boy, I spent a lot. I think I spent the most time on the back side of that rows. Turning them back, they'll look always a little wrong to you sometimes, you know, and that's, and you just start, keep working. That's the thing is, you know, you'll, you'll come into anything, into a composition or something like that, and it'll start, there'll be some things that'll maybe start look a little wrong, and you just got to keep working, keep working at it. Let's put in just a few little blossoms back here, I think would be kind of pretty, because blossoms just lighten up and airy up a painting, and so maybe uh, just a few of them here. I like little blossoms into a painting, and I'll put uh, a little bit of the red violet there into the center right there, and uh, maybe a touch of the yellow oxide right there. That's kind of pretty. I just love little blossoms. I just, you know, they just add a bit. Maybe a touch of the yellow and the and I just take it on the corner of my brush, the yellow and the light, and I tap it like this. This is what I call modeled, so it's not perfect. And then I just tap it into a few areas and just let what happens, happens into that painting. So let's take a little bit of that green and this violet and stuff, maybe back here. Add another little one. And I wanna add, I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna add some extender, cause I'm gonna go way out up here and just add a few little marks here, so those going up, and then we'll come back down here, and we'll add a few little marks of maybe some back out here, down at the bottom, just pretty little marks. Let's add a little light stroke across, that a light stroke kind of across like that turns the blossom, see? Gives it a little turned. And let's just add a bit of red violet there into the center. And they, you know, when you're painting little blossoms like this, they're nothing. They're, you know, don't don't get wrapped up in trying to make them all perfect, because you don't have to. You know, you they don't have to. Just give the impression of them and they do it. They do a good job. Let's take some green and some red violet here, nice dark. You could also do this a light color. And let's just give some movements here, like um, maybe some more green and burnt sienna too. I love those colors. Just some movements here for like stems and stuff like that through the painting. Let's take a, and then some of this you can do a little lighter, like a stem is sitting right up in front of this here. Let's lighten that up just a bit, maybe pull one right down here, a little more green and yellow here, there like that. Just keep it, keep it very, you know, impressionistic. Maybe just some color marks, maybe there's a leaf or something right in here. Some color marks here and, you know, maybe these leaves, this is, this would, if you're going to go into some of that Grand Manor style, that real casual style, you would just pull in some colors. Let's get some more yellow into that. Yellow and light. More yellow. Different here. Just pull in some colors here and let those edges and stuff just kind of blur and play together and stuff. You know, just boom, pull that through. You know, I, you're painting it for color and movement more than anything else. Color and movement. And so just kind of pull those colors in like that. And it's just kind of a real pretty way to get some of these marks, nice little marks here through the edges and lighten up your composition all the way through. It's just kind of fun. But <clears throat> all kinds of ways. You could come in, you know, and really like put a darker color through there if you wanted. I kind of like that. I, I kind of want to put a one little heavier mark. I, I like it. Uh, and uh, do you do it? <laughs> you know, no matter how many times I paint flowers, I, I run into indecisions too. Uh, you know, do I put up a little bit more of a strike of the light. Yeah, I kind of like that. But maybe not smooth, just lift up with that. Lift up 
sometimes a nice dirty green finger will put in see up some of that green and that will uh, just soften that down into place I like that little extra hit of light I've got a lot going on back through here so any kind of extra hit of light or texture right up here will really uh, bring this rose up into its focal area right here which is what I really want and maybe a little mark or two of it right here right out here just just little touches of it and just let that sit there there we go just see I like how that fades that out maybe a touch of that little light right here and a touch maybe pulling right down here that gives a just see if I use that chisel of the brush it gives it more of a defined line which you know that's up to you that defined line adds a, a bit more of detail contrast onto it and that's up to you how much you're gonna do up there but we'll do that I kind of like that kind of like that composition going up through there so there you go there's an idea of it <gasps> under an hour we did a 56 minutes right around there that's not too bad for a painting that's like this and uh, so what I'll do is what you're going to be noticing here and I'll publish it into the community page what I'll do is I'll put a link and it's going to be in the next two weeks or so we're going to have the gallery sale and stuff that we put up there. Really appreciate your support. This, you know, if you want to collect a painting, this is your opportunity to collect a painting because we put them in in really good prices. My wife and I take all these paintings. We donate them to our foundation, which then pays for everything that we do here so we can keep the channel free. We can do a lot of our uh, uh, scholarships and things like that that we love to do into the art industry, okay? So... Look for that on the community page when I do that announcement. And uh, if you want to collect some of these paintings, we sell them framed and unframed and stuff like that. And so, uh, and I'm going to do a bunch more. Those of you in the membership, I'll paint up a whole bunch more. So those of you that get the opportunity and maybe want to buy it, you can, have, you can watch me paint it. And then you'll have the original there as well. Okay, so it's a lot of fun. Then we pr thank you very much for your support. Don't forget to like and uh, share the video, share the channel. It's all free. You know, those of you there in the memberships get a little bit more stuff. And again, everything we do, that just helps everything that we do um, stay free. Okay, stay absolutely free. So anyway, thank you very much, guys. Thanks for your support. I'll be doing more. I'll be doing more of the, uh, the landscapes and stuff. I have a little church that I want to put back behind a mountain. And uh, I want to paint that, too, into a landscape. So a lot of stuff to show you guys, a lot of stuff to do. And uh, as always, you know, keep those ideas coming because I have a whole list of things I still got to paint. Thanks very much. Keep it under an hour, and we're all good. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.